Um, Japan and Korea just this last week agreed on currency swaps. This has been revived since um, 2015 when it just went into the toilet. So the finance minister from uh, South Korea visited the finance minister from Japan this week. They signed a couple of deals. And um, the, the ID here on the currency swaps, since the yen is now 145, there's a little bit of movement there. It does impact what's going on with um, um, the, the South Korean currency and other currencies here in the region. So they've decided to um, commit $10 billion to preserve the currency. So there's, there's not that much fluctuation um, this is following what they initially started in, 20, um, in 2001 for, to um, prevent the after effects of the earlier financial crisis. And at that time, they committed 13 billion yen, which at that time was a little bit more expensive than what 13 billion is uh, right now. So they ex um, devoted that for currency swaps. They increased it um, 10 years later to 70 billion in 2011. But during that time under the Park administration, as you'll recall, the disputes between Japan and uh, South Korea over the comfort women issue, the, the statues that they were putting in several cities throughout the United States and, and Europe, um, uh, you know, keeping this issue alive and in the public eye, it really damaged the relationships. And, and um, so this died in 2015, uh, this currency swamp um, uh, collaboration. So it, that it's getting back on track, it's getting new life into it is a, a pretty big deal and something to watch. It is a indicator of other things that are going on. So Yoon, Yoon's visit to uh, Japan was the first time that a, a president of South Korea visited Japan in 15 years. So that's also big. Japan also relaxed export controls in March for trade and products coming in from South Korea. This was kind of reciprocal to what the Koreans did a couple of months earlier. I don't know why there was a lag there, but <clears throat> maybe just in terms of, you know, confidence building, you do it first and then we will follow up. Um, and as a consequence of that, Seoul withdrew its trade complaint in the World Trade Organization against Japan's kind of discrimination, pro discriminatory practices with regard to uh, uh, products and services. Um, on Tuesday, Korea um, also went on the preferred trade partners list, the white list for Japan. So now uh, products are dealt with an arm's length uh, transaction without any discrimination, without any um, uh, owner's subsidies or regulations to be with that. And um, um, the uh, Washington Declaration, which was signed in April um, when Biden and Yoon and uh, Kishida got together, uh, deals with uh, sharing information, nuclear proliferation and that sort of thing. Um, so these are pretty big deals that are starting to uh, really take hold. The South Korean-Japan relationship, I think, um, not just for the United States, but for, um, for uh, the stability of the Asia-Pacific region is really a critical um, bilateral relationship that needs to um, actually get even better. And I think it's moving in that direction.